So I'm doing the operating round here in 1849 by All Aboard Games. And um, yeah, second operating round um, in the game so far. So we're very early on. Um, the um, little Bayo uh, play some track, bought a four train because it's got to run, so it had to. Couldn't run because it bought the train afterwards, lost some share value. The um, Kragus here on the coast built some track, already had its train, ran for three per share, so it's marked up, you know, earnings per share three, paid paid nine to itself and 21 into the company. In this game, um, uh, shares in the company, uh, on the company treasury pay into the company, but shares in the bank pool pay to the bank, obviously shares owned by players pay out the players. Um, so yeah, 30, 21 into the company, 9 into the player, and bought another 4 train with the expectation that next turn they'd hook up here and the Syracuse would hook up here, the Archimede out of Syracuse I should say would hook up here and give um, options for running uh, in multiple directions and that may lead to some interesting um, decisions about tokening around here and whether it's worthwhile or whether this is upgradable yeah so that's going to be something that comes up pretty soon anyway uh, they didn't lose any share value for uh, because they paid out a dividend didn't gain any because it wasn't higher than their current share price which is 90 so um, now we're on to player three who has got decisions with the uh, Archimede here in Syracuse. And uh, essentially that decision is prompted by player one buying a 30% stake in the company. And player three has to wonder what that means. Because either player one is going to sell that 30% and tank the share value by at least three and probably four because there'll be shares in the bank pool after that sale. So that would drop the share price from its current 90 down 86, 78, 68, down to 57. That's, that's knocking 33 a share off each of his three shares. That's costing him 100, that sale. Um, that's not great. So that's clearly one thing that player one might have planned, or they may be trying, to, hoping somehow to get another share and take the company off me, which off player three, off me, which would not be great either. I don't know how that could possibly happen, but they may be looking to do that. But the share price tanking um, gives us two options, because we have the priority deal, so we could run the company as well as we can, and let them tank our share price and do whatever it is that they're going to do and hope that the company is strong enough to just fix it and carry on. Or we could run the company right now as badly as we possibly can and then, because we have priority deal, sell all our shares in it and hand over the company with as much damage done to it as we possibly can. While that may sound appealing, um, in this instance, I don't think we can do enough damage to it to hand over a real smoking wreck. We can't sell the train on anywhere because we don't have another company to sell it to. Um, we um, we need to buy a six train in order to... Uh, in order to push the game phase up to the point where we can sell the Mediterranean company in here, which was our plan all along. So we want to sell this companion of our Mediterranean to this, but that means buying a six train, which costs 200, and then sell that for 150, and that's 350, and that's most of the money gone, but the company would be pretty healthy uh, with a six train and a four train and um you know the game phase moved on to where syracuse can be upgraded and hooked up to the port and although we could try putting a really awkward track lay in vittoria 
um, that could be easily remedied because we could because <clears throat> a, a, a green track upgrade would rehook it back up to Terranova reasonably simply. So unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but in this situation, this company looks like it will survive quite happily um, and we're not leaving it devoid of trains and badly in need of you know investment and screwed for track uh, you know it's too early to have worked ourselves into that position and so our alternative is to try and run it as well as we can and I think that's what we're going to have to do but it was simply to point out that an option was to try and run it really really badly pass it off to this guy and start um, the RCS ourselves. I mean the, we could sell our companion Naval Mediterranean to this company and put the token somewhere absolutely useless you know like out of Palermo um, so that it can't make any use of it at all, build a really crappy track lay in Vittoria and pass it on. But I think even doing those things, I think this company is still going to be viable long term. Or at least it, it, that is still in the balance. I don't think we'd be handing on a complete dog. Um, it's possible we would, but I'm not sure. Um, and I don't fancy starting again over in Palermo. So we're going to say, let player one do his worst, sell our shares. Fuck him. Let's, uh, let's make this company a goer. Um, so with that in mind, let's do our track lay, our token lay, and our train purchases and anything else we've got to do. So our track lay is interesting. Well, our track lay... Is going to be through Vittoria because that's going to hook us up with some nice uh, options for, for running our, our soon to be two trains. So we drop uh, some track in there like that, and then we're now hooked up to that port down at Terranova and through there. Okay, token laying. So if a Kragas hooks up down here next turn. And they're going to go before us. Um, they could then token out Ragusa, which would really suck. Really suck. Although we could buy the token from them, or offer to buy the token from them, but it would still really suck. It wouldn't do them any good either because it wouldn't increase the 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 value of their runs it would just hamper ours because it would block us off from reaching Terra Nova. Um, I really don't think it's worth taking the risk of them japing us like that, especially when player one's going to tank our share price. So we are going to drop um, a token in Ragusa and that may well be a mistake but let's uh, let's do it and it's no point tokening Terra Nova or is it do we token Terra Nova instead then if they token Ragusa we've still got this thing over here and we can start something at like that yes no let's token Terra Nova instead that's far more sensible because then if Ragusa gets tokened by Archimede it doesn't block us because we can we can run we can run over here and then we can run a, a thing out here or a thing out up there or whatever. Um, let's do that. Looks looks more viable. Okay. Train running. So we have a four train. We are going to run it. Uh, well, now that we've got Terra Nova tokened, we can go 20, 40. 50, 70, and pay out at 7 a share. This turn, I'll deal with the money and come back and do the other bits. Here in the stock round then, 
Player 3 bought a share of his own company, Archimedes, to put another 90 bucks into the treasury. Player 4 followed suit and bought a pair, uh, share of Archimedes as well, since it looks like it's going to start making decent money. Um, it's got two tokens now, it's got a 6 and a 4 train, it'll get hooked up. In here it may get to upgrade Syracuse, it could suddenly be turning out really serious cash. And that has given player one some pause for thought, um, because while his plan was to dump off this 30% stake in Archimedes and start doing something else, there's a problem with that. And the problem is that there are no more four trains. He'd have to get enough capital into the company to start it with a six train. That means 200 cash. The tokens for the RCS, as we found out last time, are a massive 130. That means just to buy the tokens and then put a train on this company, you need 330 in cash. And that means you need to be able to capitalize it with something like five shares at 68, or four at 100, or three at 144, and he just hasn't the money to do any of those things. He's got, if he sells these three shares at 90, that's 270, plus 50 odd on his, uh, in his treasury, he might get up to around 330, but that doesn't allow him <clears throat> to make a share offer to capitalize the RCS in a way that makes it viable. He'd bankrupt himself um, pretty much immediately because he'd be forced to buy a train, wouldn't have any way to raise the money and go bust. So he's kind of stuck. I mean, in a way, not stuck in a necessarily stupidly bad way because he's got three shares of a company that's about to go um, likely to start making serious cash. But he can't do anything right now. He's got 50 or something in money and that's it. So he's passing. And that brings us around to player two, who's got the Lillibeo, which is about to start running. Uh, it's got a four train, but not a lot else. Um, he could pay 90 for a share in it, put some more money into his company. <clears throat> um, and maybe try and then use that to sell it, one of his privates. Um, to to recycle some cash back out of it, potentially. Um, it looks like a bit of a dog that he's got there, but let's see what he can do. He's going to do something like that. Uh, he's got to try. Carrying on with 1849 um, by all the board games. And um, at the end of the last operating round, the um, earnings per share being made by the three companies that operated, which were the Lilibeo, the Archimedes and the Acragas, are on that chart. You can see Lilibeo over here, all on his own on the west coast of the uh, island, really struggling to get any sort of um, income coming out of that company at all. Six lira per share. The Acragas um, here running routes down here into Terranova off to that port and then able to get a token over here in Syracuse um, was running at 16 a share but the big powerhouse company was the Archimede with his two sixes and his four train there um, running at 20 per share. So we then went into... Um, we then went into a stock round and the big thing that happened was that player one here sold all his uh, sold his three Archimede um, shares and that moved the stock price on the chart down here from 111 down onto 84 and because at the end of the stock round there was still Archimede left in the bank pool it went down to 70. However um, that had a couple of, well, obviously that's killed his share price somewhat, so um, he was flying out into the lead with a really profitable company and a lot of stake in it. Um, so that's kind of allowed everyone to keep pace for now. However, he still has a very profitable company for now. Um, 
and the other thing that allowed him to do was buy the last certificate came up for sale and he was uh, and at the lower price he was able to f afford that so he's now got a 60% stake in the Archimede with a very um, efficient use of his certificates because he's holding four certificates for a 60% stake that's really good for him um, other people also picked up stakes in Archimedes you can see he's got 20% and this guy over here picked up 10% simply because when it's paying out 20 a share and you can see that it's going to make enough money to boost the share price and you're only paying 84 it's just it just seems pointless not to have some of it um, so this guy's taking a bit of a risk to have um, 20% but he's willing to take that risk given how profitable it's been so far um, with the money this guy then started the RCS and um, bought up to a 50% stake in that I think he started the shares at 100 he thought about 144 but couldn't really afford to go there started at 100 plowed all his money in to capitalize it because he had to pay that 130 for the tokens so that's been the share um, round the um, priority um, deal is over here with the Archimede for the next stock round so if he does want to kill that company and dump it off he can um, but I don't think that was his long-term plan I think he always when he made the decision to hold on to it instead of dump, off, dump it off first time round I think that was the point at which he was kind of committed to trying to make it a success rather than rather than ruin it and pass it off so having made that decision it doesn't seem then very sane to change tack um, so there it is we've now got a player uh, a, a company in the hands of each player at the moment and uh, we're going to see how this sort of pans out in terms of the trains coming into play and uh, how things develop so just been through a couple of operating rounds here in 1849 um, so we're going back into a stock round but in the last operating rounds um, you can see that there's some trap hooked up here um, the uh, RCS uh, based out of uh, Palermo here ended up hooking up some track all the way around here into Marsala figuring that hooking up down in this direction these two companies are making big money they're both making 23 per share and actually the um, Archimedes was up to 27 per share at some point so why help them out by building down towards them when the Lillabeo is really struggling we're probably not helping out someone who's at the top we're probably helping out someone who's at the bottom so we'll hook up track to them strengthen their company a little bit instead of strengthening the really strong companies so um, yeah they've hooked up and you can see that both those are making 11 per share um, so quite a big difference in terms of the uh, of, of the you know cash generation of the strong two companies down here on this coast and the weaker two up on this coast um, what else happened well the Lillibeo was really really struggling with a four train and and so sold some of their shares into the bank pool two of their shares into the bank pool to to raise enough capital um to buy the eight train um because the four was just not generating enough cash and and it was going to be rendered obsolete because someone was going to buy an eight and then they were going to be really struggling because they were going to miss out on a on a run uh, and drop their share price back and that was all going to be horrible so it's interesting that you can do this that you can sell um, shares out of your company treasury to the bank take the hit on your share price and you know further hits on your share price if those stay in the bank pool at the end of the stock round but by dropping your share price because it was up here at 100 and it's dropped you know dropped down to 87 by selling a couple of shares but that does make the shares easier for you to buy back if you want to invest more into your company so there's an interesting dynamic here where you can 
capitalize your company maybe a lot faster than I have been doing if you're willing to take the risk chuck the shares into the bank pool and then buy them back at that deflated price um, yeah so there's some there's some gaminess around that that I hadn't spotted and I hadn't thought about and I'm starting to see the possibilities they're probably a little bit too late so the other thing is that with this eight train now bought everyone can sell their bonds so everyone can immediately raise 500 in cash because they can just sell their bond take the five you know sell the bond to the bank take the 500 in cash and have that 50 a turn to pay in debt but what that means is that these trains and this 10 that everyone wants because it's the first permanent train these could fall really fast you know and i think there's one 10 no, there's two. Is there two tens? And one twelve maybe? And then you're into the sixteens. So people want these tens because they're permanent trains and they're five fifties. So there's now going to be uh, maybe a game of chicken. Who has to buy the eights? Who wants to buy the eights? Who can fund an eight and still have money for a ten? You know, there's going to be some jockeying for position around the train purchases now. Um, because, you know, this guy doesn't doesn't want to have a 6 and an 8, really. If there's an option to get the 10. So how the, how the trains fall out in the next couple of operating rounds really could be, you know, very, very significant in terms of which, which companies... Um, are going to be strong in the sort of second half of the game if these guys who are already got really strong track can also engineer to have the trains fall out favorably for them they are going to be really really powerful if these guys get caught with sixes and eights and then the tens and twelves start to fall because the ten kills the six and this guy up here has got two sixes this guy's got a six. So if they can't engineer grabbing a ten for themselves, if the, the you know that's not going to look good for them. Um, so yeah, there could be some changes here, or it could really strengthen their hands. Not quite sure how it's going to go. Okay, eighteen forty nine. Just been through two operating rounds, um, and we went from having eight trains out to. Um, the first 16 coming out all in the space of two operating rounds it it just went crazy um, so in the previous stock round um, these two players had started up the Garibaldi here because he wanted another train company running and then this guy took the opportunity to start the IFT um, so that's our six rail companies out um, the guy who started the IFT made a horrible horrible error with it and started it at a share price of 68. Um, why is that horrible? Well, he wanted to put money into it, so he wanted to be able to buy four, I think he bought four shares and put 320 or whatever, 370, whatever that was at, into it. So he wanted to maximize the amount of money he could get into it, but the reason it's horrible is because you can capitalize your companies anyway, simply by dumping the shares off from the company in this in this um, uh, advanced game um, corporate stock selling you can just sell up to you know up to 50% of your company straight into the bank pool and take the money yes you have to take the share price hit but if he'd started it at 144 dropped back to 129 for not making any capital and then sold five shares he'd have been selling them at 129 a share which would have brought in 600 cash and yeah he'd have devalued his company down to 93 but his company or thereabouts but his company would have been capitalized right he could have taken the bonds and he could have had 1100 sat in the sat on the company which would have been enough for a 16 train but because of the order and the share pricing and everything because so also starting at 68 meant he came right low down the you know the 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 turn sequence and the 8s got bought up, then the 10s got bought up, then the 12 got bought up, and suddenly there's only 16s left, and he doesn't have enough money for them. And now, dumping shares into the um, share uh, into the bank pool does a number of things. Firstly, it hardly raises any cash, and secondly, it's going to close the company. 
you know, these guys, you know, just a few share sales into the bank pool and that company's gone. And, it, you know, in this game, actually, um, when companies go bankrupt like that or get closed, all their tokens get taken off the board, all their trains, everything gets closed down. Uh, but then they're then they're available to be restarted again, which is interesting. But he's just opened that by putting a lot of money into it and it's in danger of just getting shut down. Anyway, it's a horrible mistake by the IFT. But yeah, the fact that you can dump um, shares into the bank pool and take the cash, uh, unsold shares from your corporate treasury into the bank pool and take the cash, plus the availability of 500 cash by issuing a bond and taking a, uh, taking a 50 um, repayment each turn, means that there's a lot of money kicking around if you want to go that way. And of course, then the train rush started and everyone started taking their bonds, or lots of people as you can see. Bond, 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 bond. This is the only company that hasn't issued its bonds. And as you can also see, doesn't have a train. Um, and the IFT over here, money, bond issued, one, two, three, four, 575 cash, so it's going to have to pay 50 in interest, 525 cash, doesn't have a train. Um, so with the, uh, so that's the first thing, there was a colossal train rush because of bond sales and share dumping into this, into this, um, into the bank pool to try and scrabble around and get the money for a permanent train. So the Akragas got a permanent train, Archimedes got a permanent train, um, this uh, Gab Garibaldi got a permanent train, so this player is sitting on two co corporations, each with a permanent train. Craig has got a permanent train, but the IFT doesn't, and has got real big problems. This company doesn't. Um, the Lilibeo hasn't got a great route, hasn't got a route to use it, but has at least got a permanent train to run. So... Um, that's the first thing. The second thing to mention, though, is that after the 16 is bought, we know we're playing with the electric version, so you can pay 1100 to electrify your track. In fact, now that the 16 has been bought, you can pay 800 In fact, yeah, I think you can, or maybe, actually, you can pay 800 The first player to electrify can pay 800 and then after that it would be 550 for an electrification token. So there's the opportunity to do that and then buy electric trains with no range limit on them, but they can't use um, narrow gauge at 550. But there's also these R6H trains, which are permanent and cost 350. And these things um, are the reverse of normal trains in that they use narrow gauge and count it as one and normal gauge or double gauge they count as two. So they're pretty bad, um, but they are a permanent train for 350, and that's going to save this guy's bacon. The RCS is going to be saved by the fact that on the stock price chart, he's the first to act because he's got 100 share price, and there's these R6Hs available with the six, first 16 having been bought, and he can just about find 350. If he was having to buy a 16 train at 1100, he'd, just, he'd be just about to go bankrupt because he'd have no shares to sell. Um, yeah, even dumping all these shares into the share pool would raise about 400, another one 500, and then he'd have to find the cash. And, uh, well, maybe he could take... Um, no, he'd just go bankrupt because he wouldn't even be able to take the bond because the train acquiring... And the emergency funding that has to happen happens before you could issue the bond. So he wouldn't get to issue the bond in time and he'd just go bust. But the presence of this cheap 350 train is going to keep his corporation alive. I mean, it's going to limp along and not make much money, but he's going to still be in the game. This guy over here, however, could be in serious, serious trouble because he's issued his bond He's got money that he can drop. If he drops his shares into the share pool, um, that's just going to close the company down. Um, and he could do that anyway, just to get rid of the 
requirement, you know, but it's going to cost him one way or the other. So we're about to go into a share round and actually the other players could force this company to close if they each just buy one share and sell it again because that's going to drop his price, 41, 34, 27, and then with three shares in the, um, you know, no way to buy them back out again, that's going to close the company. But they probably won't simply because the... Um, the alternative of him potentially going bankrupt because he can't afford a train is probably even better for them. So closing his company, while it would be malicious and, um, you know, it would require sort of coordinated unpleasantness by all the players, um, actually just watching him flounder and try and keep this company afloat is probably better for them. Anyway, stock round coming up, priority deals over here, and uh, we'll see what happens. So I've done the first operating round of a set of three here and um, all the companies, corporations we've got now have a permanent train on them, maybe not the permanent train they wanted, but they have got permanent trains on them. So this guy's got one, this player, player two's got a one company, this Lillabeo and a 16 on it. This guy, player one's got one company with one of these R6Hs on it, which is not going to do him any good at all, but it was better than going bankrupt. Over here, this guy's got two corporations, with one with a 12 and one with a 10. He looks in a good position. And this guy's got two companies, one with a 10 and one with this R6H on as well. Um, so everyone's got, um, apart from this guy, he's probably got the best long-term setup. His share prices aren't great, but, you know, he's, he's at least in a reasonable position. Um, this guy's only... Uh, positive is that he's the he's got the only company which hasn't had to take its bonds out so he's got a company that isn't saddled with uh, 50 a turn in debt and if we come over here and look at the share prices um, you can see they're pretty low the IFT they're on 41 39 50 56 only the Akragas and the RCS have a decent share price at the moment so um, one thing I haven't touched upon yet is the end of the game. Um, a player bankruptcy doesn't end this game. The game ends in one of two ways. It can either end when a company reaches 377 in share value. Um, you can see that's a fair way off. Uh, especially bearing in mind that you can only go up in share value, as I touched on earlier, if you pay out a dev dividend greater than your current share price. So you have to be making earnings of, you know, more than what you're on to, to go up. So, you know, at the moment that's fairly easy because everyone's earnings are really low. But once you start getting up into this area, you need a decent route and a decent train to be making the 200 or 270 or 300 cash that you need to go up to the next level. So that's not going to be easy. Um, also, people can buy and sell your stock and then dump it off to uh, collapse your share price. So it may um, be very, very hard to get up to 377, certainly in this game. The other way the game ends is if the bank runs out of money and you can see there's absolutely no chance of that happening. Yeah, there's two, four, five, mm, at least 6,000 in the bank still. So we're a long way, long, long way away from that. So it's... Uh, it's a question now of seeing who can, you know, develop their track and run their companies profitably and how the sort of um, balance of having to pay out the loans and maybe try and get another train or electrify to make things more profitable, how that's all going to pan out. So there's still some life in this yet. Late on in the game here then in 1849, and you can see from that that a couple of the uh, corporations have managed to electrify their track. Um, the RCS here has got an electric train and its R6H. It's been struggling along with just this R6H, rather crappy train, but it did manage to electrify and um, that has push, pushed its earnings up to 570 in a turn, uh, which is really impressive. You can see it's way ahead of anything else. The um, this, the Kragos is the other train, other corporation to electrify, but he hasn't managed to get a run yet with this electric train. He just sold his 
he just bought it and then sold off the this uh, IFT bought the 10 from him so that that could you know do more than just um, just limp along um, so it'd be interesting to see what he he gets from that the trouble they've all got from electrifying is that the bank is down to its last few hundred bucks there's about 500 there in hundreds there may be a few hundred there in 25s but the the bank's going to break uh, this operating round um, because when you're churning out this much money you know that's 500 750 800 11 100 1, 200, 1, 600, and this guy's payout's going to go up the the cash doesn't it just isn't there to pay out 1600 or whatever the payouts are um and it's the last operating round um of this turn which means that this operating round the bank will break and you play out that set of three well this will be the last one because uh, we're we're here i move the marker up so stock round operating round one operating round two operating round three so we're just going to get this operating round and the game's going to be over it looks very much like player three's one he's just he's just taken the strategy of churning out his 250 a turn with these with his two companies paying it out racking up the cash making sure he can cover his um his bond repayments and letting everyone else do something fancy. He was the first to get the two good permanent trains, a 10 and a 12, and has just kept uh, churning out money and let the others have to worry about catching him up. Um, this guy has tried by juggling um, cash and trains and tokens between these two um, corporations to try and empower the Akragas to a situation where it's um, really strong and then give the uh, electrified and strong and then give the IFT his trains. He's just got to that point, but the game's going to end before he can capitalise on it. Um, something that is interesting, though, is that the 20% the, the shares, the last certificate, 20%, um, are a really interesting little um, uh, change in this game because it makes... It makes picking up that last share, although it's very e efficient in terms of, you know, you get 20% of a company for one share certificate, which when you run into limits is great. It also makes people very, very wary about investing in your company, especially these guys, because they've got two companies that they can pull all kinds of nasty tricks where they sell trains off to each other and dump it off in a terrible state. So if you've got two companies, it's your 20% share in your company is not a very attractive proposition. I mean, this IFT is in the bank pool here. But those 20% final shares aren't very attractive um, because, because, you know, um, there's just too much risk attached to them. Whereas these guys with um, only one company were very willing to hold quite large amounts of stock in each other's or at least go over um, 10% like this guy's got 40% of the uh, RCS because he knew the RCS wasn't gonna wasn't gonna crumble and collapse because this you know that's gonna that's this player gone so um, yeah there are a lot of interesting things in this game those 20% shares the limited number of corporations um, the track layout with the single gauge and the double gauge the electrifying track these R6H trains that come up late in the game I've played this game about four or five times, and no, four times, and I'm only just starting to get a feel for the tempo of it and how quickly things unfold. Um, you can also see in this game, uh, the corporations have got you know nowhere near the top of the track in terms of um, in terms of share value. They're all pretty low value. So um, yeah, I, although I think player three's got it. Um, it'll be interesting to see quite how close it is. So the bank did break and we hit the end of the game here in 1849. Um, let's have a quick look at a few things then. There's the board, quite hard to see I guess, but, but there's the board. The big electric run uh, was around the coast, if you could manage it, which I think one company could, um, round here along this track round here can't use the narrow gauge but round there 
down into here, then all the way along the coast up round here, down here, then down the coast round there, and then down the coast round there, and round there, and round there. So that was the biggest run that the um, uh, that could be done by a single train. The Acragus managed to run from here, Terranova, all the way round the coast until it got blocked out here at uh, Palermo and that was worth 480 as a payout. Um, the <coughs> RCS was doing something similar but then also running a separate train down over this way and therefore getting paid for Pal Palermo twice and was getting paid 570. Uh, but it all happened a bit too late for them. Here's the final sort of share uh, earnings per share for companies. RCS up here at 570, then Acragas at 480, and then everything else around the 260 to 280 mark. Although for most of the game, the IFT was down around 90, 100, only jumped up this high on the last turn of the game, having bought a 10 train to go with the R6H and able to run into Palermo. If the game had gone another set of three operating rounds, I think the result would have been pretty different because um, this guy's profitability was running out, but he'd been just just racking up money all game and everyone else had been trying to play a longer term game and ran out of time. So um, let's just, it's scoring time now. So to try and make this a bit more visual, I'm just going to do some um, I'm going to show you everyone's cash on hand to begin with and then I'm going to create a separate pile of chips for them for the values of their shares so that we can see what everyone's worth. So this guy's cash, you can see he's got 1,000, uh, player 1's got 1,200 there, 75, uh, 90, 92. So 1,292 player Two here has got, what's he got? He's got a uh, thousand, one, two, three, four hundred and twenty. So not much is it between player one and player two in terms of cash. Player three, uh, let's see, this is going to look nasty. One, two, three, four, two and a half thousand, two thousand seven hundred and eight, two thousand seven hundred and eight, double double what players one and two have got in terms of cash and player four um, 1500 1905 so a sort of midway point but player three way out in the lead in terms of cash on hand okay so now I'm going to tot up all their share portfolios based on these share prices um, player three has got the um, Archimedes and the a Garibaldi. Um, player four, who's next in line, has got the Akragas and the IFT, and the other two players have got the Lilibeo and the RCS. But they've all got a pretty full share holding across the board, so we'll see what it all pans out as. So carrying on with the scorings here then, player one, this is a stack of chips representing the value of his um, stock holdings, 1,460 in stock, 1,460 in stock for him. So this guy had this stack here, 1,575, 85, 98, 1,598 in stock. So about 100 in it, not, not that much, but just a little bit more. Over here, this guy had this stack here. That's what his stock was worth, 1,657. 1,000, yeah, 15, 16, 1,657. So again, about 100 more, maybe. And then down here, player four, his stack of chips representing his stock, 15, 50, 60, 70, 1, 1,571 in stock. So all very, very close, really, within 200 of each other in terms of their stock portfolios. Um, 
yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, but it means that player three is a clear winner given his, for, you know, his stock is worth as, a bit more than everyone else's and his cash is just way more than ever. So he's got, he's got one, two, three, four thousand three hundred and and change. Um, no one else is going to be able to match that. Um, I think this guy is next with with mm, this three thousand four hundred and something, three thousand four hundred ish, and then this guy's. What's this guy looking at? There's two and a half thousand. There's. Th there's 3,000 or a little bit over in that stack there. And this guy here, what's he looking at? If I pile all his chips up and we try and count them up from there, he's looking at, he's looking at something like that one. 2,000, 3, 5, 6, 700 and something. And that's the final scores. Um, can't be bothered to write them all down. You can see it very clearly. 4,300 here, 3,500 there, 3,000 ish there, um, 2,700 ish here. Player three, a very clear winner. And did it by getting the first two good permanent trains, a 10 and a 12, and running the companies and paying out money. Um, so took a very, very simple route to victory. Um, and obviously managed to establish two two decent uh, companies that just had not spectacular but viable runs turning in 220, 250 cash a turn and sat there and did that didn't pay his loans off or anything um, and left everyone else to try and come up with clever alternatives um, Player 4 uh, did the best job of that but that's because he... Um, open the IFT and was able to shuffle trains round and stuff uh, and tokens because you can buy tokens off each other as well in this game um, the one thing the IFT did wrong and the big mistake I pointed out at the time was starting his company off at a terribly low share price at 68 he could have fun he could have um, started at 144 um, dumped the um, uh, dumped his stock off into the bank to capitalise the company, got a permanent train, a proper permanent train, and not, you know, he might have ended up with a 16 train and not have been struggling. And at the time of that mistake, he wasn't necessarily, you know, winning, but was certainly a very, very close second. And as you can see, came a distant second. And it, that was the mistake that cost him, I reckon. Um, terrible, terrible decision. Um, yeah, these two guys over here, um, the Lillibayo struggled to get any runs or any early traction and just had to plod on and try and try and get something built methodically without taking too many risks. And so did the RCS, who was at one stage in all kinds of trouble and again did manage to finally capitalise his company well enough to get to electrify and get really good runs, but far too late in the day for it to affect the result. However, another turn of him making, churning out 570, um, would have caught him up probably into third place. Um, maybe even better, who knows. Anyway, um, that's 1849. It's uh, a really, really intriguing uh, addition to the 18xx series, and I think I, I like it, to play it solo, I like it a lot more than 30. Um, 30 is great, um, but this is just got those few extra, extra little wrinkles and changes and fun uh, that make it, uh, you know, really cool um, decision-making game throughout the entire length. And it doesn't seem to run run too long either. You don't end up. I've never ended up in a game of this where you're just churning through operating rounds waiting f for the bank to run out because because it's all settled bar the accounting um it does 
play until the end. So, yeah, really cool game.